2021 has been a strange year for gaming. Triple A title after Triple A title keeps getting delayed, giving me more time to play some smaller titles I probably wouldn't have given time to otherwise. If you are a subscriber to the channel, then you'll know games like this are right up my alley. Linear, story-driven titles are my bread and butter, and here was one that snuck upon me through Game Pass, no less. I gave it a go, and I had a jolly good time from start to finish. But Last Stop has one glaring flaw that others in its genre simply don't. With that in mind, join me as we explore Last Stop, how a game can be too linear. So first of all, what is Last Stop, and how is it structured? Last Stop is a narrative driven game where actual gameplay is minimal. Your time mostly consists of making dialogue choices for the three characters you control. There are three stories in Last Stop that are largely separate from one another with very minimal overlap until the end. What I really liked about this was how each story had a completely different tone to the others. It was as though I was watching three separate TV shows that dealt with a single common theme like an anthology or something of that ilk. It was great. You've got the Freaky Friday inspired story where you play as John, a father who swaps bodies with the younger neighbour across the street. You've got the Domestic Noir inspired story where you play as Mina, who faces issues with her work life balance. And finally, you've got the Creepy story where you play as Donna, a young girl who falls down a rabbit hole when a late night adventure with her friends goes a step too far. What I love the most is that the tone for all three stories are completely different. John's story is very light hearted everything from the soundtrack to the colour palette. There are more jokes sprinkled in, some that land and some that really don't. Spoilers for all three stories will be very minimal, and as such I can't go into too much detail, but the chapters in this story served as a refresher from the darker nature of the other stories. There's not much sinister about it for the most part, you just get to grips with people from two different generations and adapt to life in each other's bodies and grow closer as a result. Mina's story was my favourite. That's probably because A. I'm really into domestic noir fiction and B. I really did not like Mina. At all. She's cold, she's ruthless and she does some questionable things that I do not agree with. But that's what makes her section so great. I'm conflicted because I don't like this person yet I'm still playing as them and rooting for them anyway. Because I am them. I was filled with much more tension than the other stories and you feel everything slowly getting on top of her. Her family is falling apart piece by piece with her constant absence clearly affecting them. But her work is also suffering and her relationship with her dad is clearly fractured. Wildly engaging story from start to finish. Then we have Donna's story which starts off by showing that she clearly has a combative relationship with her sister and is searching for someone she can truly call a friend. She goes out with her mates and decides to stalk a strange man. For fun, obviously. Kids these days, am I right? Anyway, this eventually leads to disaster as you could have predicted and things get weirder and sadder as the chapters roll on. Donna's story was easily the creepiest of the three. It was somewhat uncomfortable and provided me with some pretty tense moments. The three stories do fully intertwine at the end of the game, but I'm hesitant to tell you how because that's kind of a massive spoiler, so I won't. All I'll say is it's a good thing that you have to complete the stories at once, rather than being able to power through them one by one. You do chapter one of the first story, then chapter one of the second story, then chapter one of the third story. It's good that they do this because the pacing would be completely ruined otherwise, and you'd potentially end up with spoilers that would make the following stories not as impactful. It's hard to explain without having played it yourself. So back to the title of the video, how can a game be too linear? Well, like this. Sometimes the Telltale games get a bad rap for giving players the illusion of choice, but my golly gosh this game doesn't even give you the illusion. There's just no choice. You make one decision per character and you make them at the very end of the game. So the only consequence is a minute long cutscene. You make dialogue choices all game, but they mean nothing. I mean nothing. Half of the time the character just says the same thing anyway. Literally, the amount of time my response would contain all three dialogue options was just far too common. Sure, the illusion of choice in other games is poor, but there's no illusion here, they didn't even try. 
I'm not one of those people who says these kind of games are just like watching a TV show and that you could watch someone play it on YouTube and get the same experience. But with this particular game, you probably could. I mean, it's on Game Pass, so if you have Game Pass, then it's worth a go. It's like six hours long. But I can't recommend you buy this, despite how much I enjoyed it. It's fun. It's got an interesting story with engaging characters with a lovely sci-fi element tacked on for good measure. Oh, and I almost forgot, this game has the most hilarious running animation I have ever seen. Just look at this. Whoever did this has to have been taking the piss. This is brilliant. Highlight of the game for sure. Of course I'm messing around, but I don't really have anything else to say about the game because there isn't really that much to say. The line between what makes a video game a video game isn't very rigid. This is still a video game. But many will leave this feeling disappointed. Even for this genre, gameplay is so sparse in that this is a glorified TV series that you can watch through Game Pass. If you enjoy these kind of games as I do, then you'll probably like it. Give it a go. But other than those people and Game Pass members, there won't be enough here to satisfy you. No decision making and lackluster dialogue options are enough to offset a great premise and strong characterization. And that is why Last Stop shows us how a game can be too linear. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please make sure to leave a like as it would be greatly appreciated by me. And if you want to see more fantastic gaming videos, then make sure to subscribe because I upload videos just like this one every single Friday. Have a nice day and goodbye.